Okay, boys and girls, for this lesson, we're gonna need at least two sheets of white paper. I took these out of my art journal, so you could tear these out of your art journal. Or if you have um, white construction paper, you can use that as well, or white copy paper. And I'm gonna be using watercolors. So my watercolor set doesn't look like the ones you have. I could not find the school watercolor set, even though I know I brought it home, but I've looked everywhere and I just cannot find it. So you use your watercolor sets from school that are, that are in your art boxes for the um, older students. And if you do not have watercolor sets in your art boxes, but you have watercolors at home, then take those out. A lot of you have bought those kits from Michaels in the past and you were given kits from Michaels a couple years ago that have little tubes of watercolors. Um, so look through at home and see what you have that maybe you can use um, for watercolors. If you absolutely do not have watercolors, you could use crayons or colored pencil, but I would prefer watercolors for this activity. Now, I'm using this paper, even though I have watercolor paper at home, on purpose because I know you don't have watercolor paper at home, or at least most of you don't. So I wanna kinda use this to see how much water this will absorb. Um, and so it's more realistic to how it's gonna come out from your side. All right, so for those of you that have kits, make sure you get your watercolor brushes out of your art kit if you have them. If not, just use whatever brush you have and you activate your colors. Remember when we activate our colors, we wet them first. We are going to be using um, two papers because on this first paper, we're going to be creating um, one color, one or two colors that are side to side, that are harmonious. And then once it's dry, we're going to be creating shapes with this and putting it on another piece. Okay, so I am going to pick a pinkish color. Now normally at school we would do wet on wet because we would be using watercolor paper, but I am afraid, well, let's try it. What is wet on wet? What are you talking about, Miss Noelia? Well, wet on wet is when we wet the paper first, and I'm just wetting it a little bit in this little corner, and then I drop some color. So we start seeing, normally with watercolor paper, you would see it spread a lot more. Here, because this paper is not watercolor paper, if I put any more water on this paper, it's gonna tear. So we are definitely, this was just me trying it out, we're definitely not gonna do wet on wet because we will ruin our paper. So we're just gonna dip our brushes into water and then get a little bit of paint and we are just gonna do, we're gonna paint like that. So I'm just gonna paint the top part of my paper maybe pink. So you do not have pink in your watercolor sets from school. You have only the primary colors, but you could make sort of a pink by adding just a little bit more, wa um, more water to your red and you could get a pink like that. So if your pink looks a little bit like a light red, that's fine. So obviously you have to be go light with this because this paper is not designed really for watercolor. If you have thicker paper, copy paper actually might be just slightly thicker than this. So you could try that. Just make sure you draw, you know, you, you take out the excess water. That means too much water that might be on your brush so that it doesn't rip. And of course, this is gonna like buckle and pucker and all those things we normally don't like, but we are just trying to create our art at home during these times with whatever we can find so that we can relax a little bit and enjoy. So there's another bird. I have a bunch of nests on the trees around my house in the back patio and I hear the baby birds chirping in the morning. I think those are the mama birds. All right, so now I think I'm going to transition down here to this half with purple because purple is close to pink. So 
I'm going to get my purple. And you're probably wondering, what is that stuff that Miss Noelia has on her table? So this is an old, um, an old um, tablecloth, a white tablecloth that I bought at the dollar store for a dollar. And Maya, my daughter, and I, we like to create art in the backyard back here in this patio because we have it's, it's a nice setting. Get to see nature and we have a screen so we kind of keep the bugs out. And so we like to create a lot of art back here, but in order to protect our table, we have this white tablecloth. And we were just doing some stamping on it recently and Maya got stamps all over the table. So that's why it's like that. And it's just easy for me to clean up that way because when I finish with art, if I wanna use the table for something else or if I wanna have the family eat outside, when it's nice and cool, which is not very often lately because it's very hot already in South Florida in March, but I can also just pick up the tablecloth and put it away and my table's nice and clean underneath. So that's what that is. All right, so I'm not gonna get too perfect with my watercolor technique for this because this isn't watercolor paper. So I'm going to just let this dry and I'm gonna get my other sheet. So this is my other sheet. And I'm gonna look at my color wheel because I use pink and purple. And I'm going to see, hmm. So I kind of use this color, this pink. Let's see, let's look at the other side of the color wheel. Doo -doo -doo. To see which way I wanna go with this. So this is pink and this is purple. So I think I want to put it on, hmm, I'm deciding whether I want to do blue or I want this background to be yellow. Because I could either go to blue or yellow. It's still within the side-by-side -side colors, okay? I think I'm going to do blue. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take a bigger brush this time because I just want to paint this whole thing blue. And I'm gonna have a lot of different blues in my kit. You boys and girls maybe don't have so much. And I'm just gonna do blue this way. I'm just gonna do it side to side. Oops, I moved the camera, sorry about that. So I'm just gonna create this blue background. And, and notice I'm not even using my watercolor brush right now. I'm just using my flat brush, just cause I think it might be a little bit easier to brush it back and forth. Okay, so while we're finishing up, I wanna tell you what the next step is. The next step is you going around your house once this is drying, and you're going to look for objects that are round because we are gonna be tracing circles. So this is pretty much painted. I'm gonna let it dry. And what I want you to do is go around, your let, set that aside, let it dry and go around your house and look for things that have a circle. So I had a lid from my gorgonzola cheese that I was gonna, I had finished with it and I just kept the lid. I like to keep the, the lids of those feta cheese and cheese containers because I can always clean out the container and use it to mix paint. I have a bottle cap. I have a big circle from the top of one of those, um, I think, public salads. But I could also use the bottom of this jar 
okay? Or the bottom of a cup, or I have my um, masking tape, I can use this. So what I want you to do now is while your uh, paint is drying, take some time and look for, I don't know, two or three things that are circular. And try to make sure that they're, they're different sizes, like a big one, a small one, and maybe one in the middle, okay? See you soon. Okay, so now I am, my paper's sorta dry. I'm gonna take my circular objects and a pencil and I'm just gonna place them somewhere on my paper. Oh no, see what happened? My table was wet and now my paper got wet again. Okay, it's okay, we'll deal with it. So I'm just going to trace my circle. I don't know if you could see it because it's really bright. And then I'm gonna trace um, the little bottle cap in different places. We are gonna need scissors for this, so you're gonna need to borrow some scissors if you don't have scissors, but I believe all of you have scissors in your regular school supplies from the beginning of the year. If not, you can ask mom and dad to lend you some scissors. All right. All right. So I drew one, two, three, four, five circles. I guess I can make some smaller circles with my bottle caps. Um, all right, and now the next thing is to cut these out. So be careful with your scissors, pointing them away from your face and start cutting out your circles. What they're doing in the back is I guess they're installing new power lines to the community. Well, not just the community, to the whole area because they've been working on that for a couple weeks now. I have to be careful because my paper's still a little wet and I don't want to tear it. Here's my big pink circle, which is a little damp. So I'm just really trying to be very, very careful that I don't tear it. All right, boys and girls, so here are my little circles that I've cut out. And I'll tell you, you see this? Normally we would throw this away, but because this has now a texture on the background, we can cut this up into small pieces and store it away in our art boxes because we can use this later on for collaging. Those of you that have done jelly printing with me know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna set these aside and we can maybe use this in another project in weeks to come. All right, so I'm taking my blue paper. Um, I'm gonna take, tear off my little edges here. Carefully, pull on one side and tear with the other. This is only if you use this art journal paper. If you use regular copy paper or white paper, then you don't need to do this. Now, normally when we're collaging, I always like to use a, a thicker paper underneath, but because I'm working with maybe found objects that you have in, at home, we're gonna try to work with what we have, okay? So I'm gonna try to flatten this as much as possible because it's dry, but it's been drying outside and Yep, there's a truck passing by. All right, and now I'm gonna take and place these circles in different parts of my paper, just like this, just to have an idea of how I want to place them. Obviously, I don't like it like that. Um, I can do this. I can put one inside the other. 
and alternate the colors. See, like pink, purple, pink. I could do that. But I don't want to do that either. I don't know. You come up with your design, however you want it on your paper. These circles could represent bubbles, underwater bubbles. Um, and maybe if that's the case, you'd want your smaller bubbles kind of floating to the top and your bigger bubble on the bottom. Something like that. Or the bubbles, or, or the circles don't have to be bubbles. You know, they could be something else. They could be planets. And you can maybe put them like planets around space. Okay, it's up to you how you want to place them. Um, so I'm gonna think about my placement and then I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna start gluing them down. Okay, so I decided that I'm gonna make mine in sort of abstract bubbles. And now I'm just putting a little bit of glue because this paper is not too thick. And I'm gonna put my largest bubble on the bottom. So I wanna weigh down the paper, okay? why I'm doing it like that and I'll put this kind of mid-range bubble over here and then I'll kind of float this bubble around here or circle and I decided to take some circles out because I wanted to have an odd number of circles. I kind of like, let's alternate these colors so I can have purple here and a pink here. I like to have odd numbers of shapes. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and odd numbers, remember, are the numbers one, three, five, seven, and nine. And so they look really good when you're creating art pieces to have odd numbers. At least I think so. So this is what my piece looks like right now. All right, now um, on to the next step. All right, so since I had these little circles that I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna put this in my scrap pile like I told you before, keep those aside for another project. So now you can take a pen, a black pen if you have. I have a, these are one of my favorite I get these at the dollar store. Pilot G2, I love to use these. They're cheap, but they work well. And they're in black. And I'm going to kind of doodle on each of my bubbles. So let's see if I can zoom in at all. It doesn't let me zoom because I have the way that I have the camera flipped. So I'm just gonna make, try to go around the inside of this circle, not quite touching the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is supposed to be fun and relaxing, so we're not looking for perfection. And if your paper's still wet and your glue is still wet when you're doing this, um, you have to be really careful, so you want it to dry because your paper can actually tear if the glue is still, if you put too much glue while you're pressing with your pen or your marker. You could also do this with black marker. So I've kind of outlined the edges. Now I'm gonna make different markings inside. So on this one, and this is up to you how you wanna do it. So on this one, I am, let me try to see if I can bring the camera just a little bit closer. On this one, I am going to just make like spirals, you know, like a circle within a circle, within a circle, within a circle, okay? And maybe on this one, I wanna do the same thing so my, my piece is a little bit balanced. But on this one, I wanna do maybe something else. Maybe I want to do some swervy 
the lines on that one. Kind of like some squigglies, okay? And I'll do some squigglies on this one and on this one. And on this one. So it's very abstract. I'm gonna look at this a bit and see what does it remind me of. Sometimes when I'm doing this, it will remind me of something and I immediately get another idea. Sometimes it just stays abstract and I just like the look of it and it's good just like that. I think I'm gonna take and do the edges a little bit too. Carefully. Turning my paper as I go. Oops, I got on the blue, it's okay. And maybe as you're doing this, you can think of some words of how you're feeling right now as you're creating this art. Maybe you're really happy because you love to do art. Maybe you're frustrated because, I don't know, you tore your paper. Maybe you're feeling sad because you miss your friends during this time and your teachers. Maybe you're feeling loved because you know that there's so many people that love you. So just think about those words as you're doodling because we might use those words in our art. And if you need help spelling the words, you can maybe look, up, look it up in a dictionary or there's a dictionary.com or you can have mom and dad help you spell the words if you're a younger student and are still learning how to spell. All right, so I think I'm gonna put some words. And right now I'm feeling happy because I get to talk to you boys and girls. So I think I'm gonna write the word happy inside my big circle. but I'm also feeling warm because I'm doing this outside. And let's see, I'm feeling calm because I'm doing what I love to do, which is to create art with boys and with you guys, with my boys and girls, even though I can't see you right now because of the coronavirus, but I'll see you soon. Hmm, what else am I feeling? Let's see, boys and girls, what are you feeling right now? Maybe some of us are feeling scared because we don't know what's happening right now. So we could be a little bit scared. That's okay to feel that way sometimes because we don't know what's happening. Something's happening in the world that's different. So I wrote scared. And now I'm gonna look at my piece and see, do I wanna just leave it like this? or do I wanna connect them? You know I love to draw and I like to add a lot of color. So we could leave it like this or we can add more doodles. And you know, if you know me, I think I want to just start drawing doodles around my little circles. Now, you don't have to do this part. You could just be finished if you want. But doodling sometimes helps me stay calm and it still helps me to be focused. It also helps me to relieve stress. And if you could see, I'm not really doing it in any perfect way. It's just random doodles. On this one, I'm just gonna do squiggly lines. This one, I think I'm gonna just like do little triangles going around. Hopefully my video techniques will get better, boys and girls. Miss Noelia is still learning this too. Okay. 
And now if I wanted to, I can take markers or crayons and color in um, my flowers or my designs if I wanted to. Or I could just leave it like that. I can also take color pencils. Color pencils will work well over this watercolor. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna use this, it's like a crayon that I have here and I'm just going to color a little bit in. But like I said, you don't have to do this part. You could have left it just as is. I'm just doing this because it's keeping me calm. It's helping me to relax and to be happy. Because I know boys and girls are doing this too. I'm notice that I'm staying within the same color scheme that I was using. I don't want to get too far off. I'm gonna see if I have purple. Hmm, my purple's all the way over there. So I brought uh, my cup over with my sort of colored pencils, but they're also, some of them are made with different, um, I don't know, ink or, not ink, but dye. And so they're more vibrant than others. So I'm just using these and just doodling around. I'm trying to stay with my pink and purple and maybe some blue color scheme. And I think I'll take pink and color it in here. And so I think I'm almost done with this picture. I always like to add white. Let's see if the white, if you have white in your color pencils, you might be able to do something with that if not you could just leave it like that you can't really see it too much here so i'm just gonna not use it there i think i'm going to take my pen again and just make some lines around my circle, like some spiral squiggly lines. Just like that. It's getting kind of bright outside, so soon I'll have to go inside because it'll be too hard for the camera to pick up what I'm drawing. There you go. I'm done with my picture. If I want to do a border to my picture, I can take a ruler and draw an edge around it. That's up to you. But I think I'm done. All right, boys and girls, I can't wait to see what you send me. Have fun. So this is the final picture. And basically what you see here is that I added washi tape um, around the edges of the picture.